Hi, this is John Next Door with my new video tutorial which is on making this. Now I don't actually have a name for it. I actually made it initially as a leaving gift for a friend of mine at work. And what I'd done with the original one, which you'll be able to see on the blog post that accompanies this video, is it had a birdcage in the middle and obviously it was boxed. But this tip video tutorial today is about making the basic frame and the basic idea. The next video will be on making the box and decorating the frames when completed. So the idea of this is that what you've made is an item that stands up proud. It's very hard to see from the top view so hopefully I can slot a picture in now. Hopefully you've just seen a picture, but just there, as you can see, it folds out and it's hexagonal and it actually has six spokes. It makes a beautiful gift and it also makes a beautiful picture frame because you can put a picture in the middle. But I'll move on to that when we go into the decorating of it. Today it's the basic making. The original I made was made like this which was made using the Spellbinders A2 Filigree Delight die and the centre section. Now, as my regular followers will know, I like to make something new for the tutorials. Same idea, but different colours or something. So what I'm using for today's tutorial shows you that you can use quite a few different dies for that. And the two I'm using is the brand new Spellbinders card creator Divine Eloquence die, and I'm using the outside die from that, and then Labels 28. I happen to notice, and I'm sure it was designed that way, that the centre section from this die fits Labels 28 perfectly. So what I've done is taken the third size from the Labels 28, and the outside from the Spellbinders Divine Eloquence. And quite simply, I've placed the labels 28 in the middle, exactly equal, and then I have masking taped it down so that it stays and it's quite robust. What that does is gives me my outside frame and then gives me my aperture. Now this has to then be run through with your cardstock, through your Grand Calibre or similar machine, six times to create six different or exactly the same I should say pieces or die cuts. All I've done to do this is to cut an A4 sheet of card into four equal pieces which in the UK is what we'd actually call A6. I believe in the US it's called A2 but in England it's A6. Cut that down I then simply stick down using the bits of masking tape, the die cut, and I run it through the machine. I haven't got a movable camera, so I'm not going to show you that. Thankfully, here's some I made earlier. And what I've done is I've cut six, and I'll show you here one of them. So you've actually got all of the filigree section cut out, a little bit stuck there, you take that out, with the centre section cut in. I've cut and embossed that, and as I said, I've cut six of them. Now, quite simple next, all I'm going to do is score in the middle. Now, it happens that this one actually fits exactly in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten centimetres, which means that I can score on the five line. But if you're not sure, what you can do is to uh, Simply fold one in half to find out where the middle is and use that as a template if you're using different dies. So it's placed on the line and I'm simply going to score down those two lines. And then I'm going to fold over till I get it in an exact spot so it lines up exactly. And using my bone folder, clip each fold. Now the boring bit is that I have to now do this six times. However, I will only show you two or three, don't worry. So again, it's folded in half, matched up, 
and then fold it on the line. And again, there's a little bit that's not adhered properly. One more onto my craft mat. Now, luckily, my cutting mat has one centimeter marks all along one side and has imperial on the other side. Since I was taught in metric at school, I nearly said imperial then. Since I was taught metric at school, I don't really get imperial. But I'm sure that these will fit into an imperial if that's the way your mind works. So, for speed, there's three. Now, the simple thing to do is to simply glue those together. I'm using a clear tacky glue. This is Do Crafts, Crafters Companion, sorry, Creative Expressions even make a brilliant one. And all I'm doing is putting a line of the glue or a mess of the glue around the thickest part of the frame and then I'm dotting it all over the filigree bits. Now for speed, I am doing this relatively quickly. You can do it a lot slower and a lot neater because I'm missing a lot of bits. There we go, so that's one done. Take one with the fold and place it on top of the glued section. Making sure that it lines up on all of the filigree and on the edges. I fold that piece in and then repeat the procedure for the next one. Now for, again for speed I'm only gluing round the side this time. Again the fold and I'm making sure each time that it's folded into the embossed side so that I'm not gluing the embossing section in. Fold it out. And as you can see there, I've already got, if it glues properly, half done. Right, so I've stuck together three of the pieces so far, which are giving me two arms and two bits sticking out. Before I go any further, I'm gonna stick in the center piece. Now what I've done is I've made, using the centre die from the Divine Eloquence by Spellbinders, I've cut four of these and in the same manner I've scored them in the middle and put them together. I've run a thread of cotton through it and I'm just going to adhere the cotton in. So I'm going to, again, get any glue out of this. Really, I should have filled up my glue bottle. It's a tip that Wendy next door gave me, is to use a small bottle of glue and fill it from a large bottle. When it runs out, fill it again. Just makes it a bit easier. So I'm just placing exactly in the centre the piece and then I'm taking the thread around the frame, if you can see that, and bringing it back through the glue again. That just ties it off. Again, I'm going to do it the other side, take the piece of thread round, pull it through, make sure it's taut in the middle, and I'm going to leave that there, because next I'm going to glue the next piece on. So, I'm going to add a little bit of glue there where the thread is and again for speed I am just doing this very very quickly I would suggest as I'm using white card it can be made in any colour but I do tend to make most of my things certainly prototypes in white that you spend a little bit more time on your sticking down and your gluing so I'm going to place that one on there move the next one over I'm going to again put glue onto there and again, oops, that is a lot. 
This one will look quite messy when done, I'm afraid. And well, one of my favourite sayings and stamps that I've got is a Tim Holtz which says, creativity is allowing yourself to make mistakes. Art is knowing which ones to keep. So if this comes out and it's all blobby, I will do something with it, even if it means dipping it all in glitter to actually correct the mistakes. I don't like wasting things. There we go. So the final one goes on there like that. And again, I'm matching it up loosely because of time. Move the cotton out of the way. I'm then going to stick down the final piece to the other side and again applying far too much glue very quickly I'm going to fold that piece over and match it in there we go screw it in the middle so hopefully when I pull each of the legs or the arms out there we go we can see that if it's glues properly and again do this when it's drier than I'm doing but hopefully you'll be able to see that we've got six pieces hanging perfectly or folding perfectly and we've got a shape hanging in the middle I'm just going to cut that off and again just to help it all to adhere and to keep in place I'm putting a pin down and into the centre of that one which keeps it in place and then I'm folding all of the arms open I'll fold open the shape in the middle and that should give you an idea of how to make the basic hexagon styled frame picture frame decoration with a centrepiece that swings on the next video demonstration I'll be showing you how to make the box for it and again, a couple of ideas on how to decorate it. But for now, enjoy.